Hi everyone, my name is Claire and I work as a Principal Ecologist here at Pell Fishman and today I'm going to talk to you about biodiversity net gain. The aim of this video is to provide you with an overview of biodiversity net gain or BNG as it's also commonly referred to and how our ecology team can help your projects with this. Biodiversity net gain is an approach that ensures changes brought about by development conclude with biodiversity faring better than it did before works took place. Biodiversity net gain is not a replacement for ecological impact assessment, protected species surveys or any other forms of biodiversity assessment that are required for a planning application. It should be used in combination with these and other approaches rather than as a replacement. Biodiversity Net Gain delivers measurable improvements for biodiversity by creating or enhancing habitats in association with development. So where a development has an impact, it requires developers to provide an increase in appropriate habitats over and above those being affected. This would ideally always be at the same location, but where that is not possible, it may be achieved by improvements for biodiversity in other locations, which we'll cover in more detail later. Currently, there is no legislation that is actually enforced with regards to biodiversity net gain. However, this will be changing in November this year when you will hear the term mandatory biodiversity net gain being used more. This is because the Environment Act, which received royal assent on the 9th of November in 2021, will come into force following the two-year transition period. The Environment Act has added a new section and a new schedule into the Town and Country Planning Act that will become enforced when this transition period is over in November and this will be applicable for most projects. The key obligation under the Act is a mandatory delivery of at least 10% biodiversity net gain and it applies in England only at this stage. BNG will be delivered through a deemed planning condition, so every planning application submitted after the transition period must have this condition, which will be worded in effect that no development can commence until a net gain plan and a net gain statement have been submitted to and approved by the local planning authority. Currently, under the Act, there are very few exceptions for the requirement of mandatory biodiversity net gain, but those currently exempt include permitted development, marine development, and where a site contains no natural habitat, so the baseline biodiversity would be zero, for example, a tarmac car park with no planting or other green space. In addition, an exemption will apply to temporary impacts that can be restored within two years, such as small pipeline projects. Other exemptions may also apply and will be confirmed within the secondary regulations, but we can expect these to include very small sites, such as under 25 metres square in area or 5 metres in length, household applications and small-scale self-build and custom house building. So how will biodiversity net gain be calculated and achieved? Biodiversity metric 4.0 is the calculation tool and it uses habitats, the places in which species lives, as a proxy to describe biodiversity. These habitats are converted into biodiversity units and it is these biodiversity units that are the currency of the metric. We must account for three types of biodiversity unit overall, habitat areas, linear hedgerow units and linear river units. These habitats to be included in the assessment are all of the habitats that are within the red line boundary and in relation to river units it's where the top of the river bank falls within 10 metres of the red line boundary which is also known as the riparian zone. Rule 2 of the metric user guide stipulates that these three types of biodiversity unit described are unique and cannot be sum traded or converted. So when we are reporting, you will see that we discuss these all separately and do not sum or combine them to give an overall unit change or percentage change. The value of these biodiversity units are calculated using the size of a parcel of habitat, hectares for area habitats and kilometres for linear habitats, and its habitat quality, which is assessed by habitat distinctiveness, which are preset by Natural England, and habitat condition, which will be assessed by the ecologist during a site survey. In addition, the site will be assessed in relation to its strategic significance as being more joined up is an important part of halting and reversing biodiversity declines. So this means that the metric will account for whether or not the habitat is sited in an area identified as being of strategic significance for nature in a relevant local strategy, local plan or similar. So the key steps in any BNG assessment are measure the baseline habitat value, we then measure the losses due to development and add in the retained areas and gains from our landscape plan and then the difference between the two will hopefully be above 10% in our three unit areas. As I mentioned earlier, all habitats within the red line boundary must be included with the BNG assessment, so anything outside of the red line boundary will be classed as off-site. 
Overall, there are three opportunities to deliver biodiversity net gain. First of all, on-site net gain, as this is the first option and always our priority in line with the existing mitigation hierarchy of avoid, mitigate and compensate. On-site net gain is fairly straightforward in that we achieve the required 10% net gain for our three unit areas within the red line boundary and therefore on-site. This also provides higher value to our BNG units, which generally reduce in score the further away from the site you get due to a spatial multiplier. Secondly, we have registered off-site biodiversity net gain, which is allocated to the development. This option of delivering BNG off-site will need the land to be formally registered on a biodiversity gain site register, and we're currently awaiting further details of how this will work within the secondary legislation. And finally, statutory biodiversity credits, which will be a government-based scheme, which we're also currently waiting further details within the secondary legislation. However, what we do know is that the aim will be for net gain to be delivered through large-scale habitat projects, delivering high-value habitats that can also provide long-term nature-based solutions. And these credits will be intended for use only where BNG cannot be delivered on-site or off-site by the market, and they will be a last resort. So overall, these three options give us a way for any development to achieve the mandatory 10% net gain required under the Environment Act. So what does this mean for you as our client and your planning application? Firstly, choose your development site carefully. Low quality habitats are preferred and are easier to achieve a net gain on. Along with this, design your red line boundary carefully. Early consultation with ecologists really will be key here for moving projects forward. Then we need to complete our baseline survey and complete the net gain metric and submit this as part of the planning application. The key thing to remember is that development cannot start until the planning condition is discharged and this will require the net gain plan and the net gain statement to be approved. If this is breached, it's expected to carry the usual penalties for breaching of a planning condition. The net gain plan and the net gain statement can either be submitted during the determination of the planning application and therefore they can get discharged at the same time as the planning permission or they can be submitted after determination and get discharged after planning permission along with the other planning conditions. So thank you very much for listening to this very quick overview of BNG and how it needs to be addressed in compliance with the Environment Act. And as you can see, the Health Fishman team have got a lot of experience of delivering net gain on projects ranging from major infrastructure schemes through to small urban developments and in resolving significant constraints to delivery. We invite you to talk with our ecology team as soon as possible as we're able to offer you expert advice that will maximise the smooth and cost-effective delivery of BNG for your project and we look forward to working with you in the future. Thank you.